All right, we did our high school game, then we went to LSU, and we did that. In this video, I wanna talk about my gear that I'm rolling with, some tips for beginner photography, videography within the sports industry, some tips to help you ease your mind, and to get cool with the other ones around, okay? So let's get started. For my bread and butter camera is the Canon R5. And what I like to shoot with is a Canon RF 70-200 2.8. The reason I like that is because the longer the focal length, the more the compression. Not many people video with a 70-200 or those longer telephoto lenses for the simple fact that whenever you zoom in and like you go to 200 millimeters, every movement you make within video, it's gonna show in your footage. You know, a lot of people are walking around and, and filming and like, it, it might make you motion sick if you watch it too much, right? But with the Canon R5, the reason why I love it so much is a feature that does super slow motion and it films at 119 frames per second. Most cameras film at 60 frames per second as the highest. I like this one because it's 4K at 119 frames per second. If I'm shaky, which I am, I only need like two or three seconds because the thing about social media is, is the attention spans are so short. You wanna be changing a clip 2.8 seconds. I might have a clip that's long, but if I got two good usable seconds, I'll chop that and I'll use it. That's why I love the Canon R5. And it gives you a look that people are like, yo, what frame rate is this? Like, how is it so slow motion, so buttery crispy? That's why I like the Canon R5. A downside to that is that high frame rate is sending a lot of data to your camera. So you do run the risk of overheating, especially whenever you're switching from photo to video. If you have it on high continuous burst mode on the photos and you just then it could overheat. You gotta turn your camera off in between the shots. I don't just leave my camera on while I'm waiting for the next play. If I'm not recording, boom, I'm hitting that camera off. And this could help on some overheating issues that you might face. The R5, the R6, all these cameras are really photographer cameras with video capabilities. So if you're planning on shooting a lot of video, a lot of interviews, and you wanna go get a bunch of B-roll, you might wanna to upgrade to a cinema camera, just for the simple fact that you could overheat because these cameras aren't meant to record longer than 30 minutes. The only reason I don't have a cinema camera is because I can also shoot photos. And I don't wanna sacrifice bringing two cameras, which I already do. I bring a backup, the R6, in case the R5 overheats, but they both can shoot photos, they both can shoot video, and so that's why I continue to use the R5. Now you might see some crazy things I have hooked up on my R5. I've got some handles, I got a handle on top, a handle on the side, and I've got the bottom of a DJI gimbal. I've got a cage, battery grip. I do all this so I can weigh it down and I can rest it against myself, and I also use Different mics. I use a two mic setup. The Rode Wireless Go 2 will be plugged into my Ninja, which is an external recorder, monitor. And then I have my shotgun mic, the Deity D3, plugged into the camera itself. Now the bad part about that cool slow motion, it doesn't record sound. So no sound is being recorded. So that's why I have the Ninja. Because when I hit record, the Ninja external recorder is recording everything that the camera is seeing. So even though I'm shooting in super slow motion with no sound, the Ninja can't record 119 frames. So it's just recording 60. And because I have the Rode mic hook into the Ninja, it's collecting that data into the sound file into the Ninja. The Ninja actually records into a one terabyte SSD that's attached to the Ninja. And a lot of people will use the Ninja to record. There's a button you can hit on the Ninja and you hit record. That'll actually record to the Ninja itself and it won't overheat your camera. There's some cool YouTube videos out there where people are actually recording 8K with a Ninja and like it's a long time and the camera won't even overheat. When it comes to sports photography, it's, it's hard to get a shot where the person is not surrounded by people or the crowds behind them. But one thing I've learned is that you want to try and have the cleanest, most least distracting background. So if that's getting lower and pointing up, do that. It just always be aware of what's behind your subject because you might get a good shot. Sometimes you'll have some stuff in the background, but 
It's all about getting a clean look where the, the image is not suffocating. You don't feel like, I don't know what to look at. That's really what makes a good image, right? When you look at a photo and your eyes know exactly where to go. After the play, you know, and the play's done, we put the camera down. Hold the shot is what it's called. Keep rolling on that person, okay? Because they might do something crazy. They might do something funny. They might dance and you got your camera down. You're like, bro, I do that all the time. A tip that can help you get better acquainted with other photographers out there is to be of value, be resourceful, you know, be nice. Some people, they're not always gonna be nice. They're gonna be in the zone. You might see them with headphones in. Just let them do their thing. They like to shoot. They, they've been doing this for years. But what I like to do is I'll get shots of the other photographer. They're so in the zone and everybody's so focused on the game, they don't even recognize that you're getting shots of them. And then later you go out and you edit them. And the next time you see me like, oh, hey, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to give you this. Then look, they're gonna light up because they're not expecting it. And they don't have those moments. They're always the ones behind the camera. So if you can do that for somebody or, or anybody really, it doesn't have to be the players. Get the surrounding fans. You wanna send those to those fans. You wanna take some shots and you see them next time. They're gonna be blown away and they're gonna love you for it. So you're out there to create, you're out there to have fun. Don't be so locked into the game. Don't be so nervous. Just pay attention to what's going on around you, the experience of it all. And that's what makes it beautiful and that's what makes it great. And from that, people are gonna enjoy having you around and that's whenever you're able to ask questions and you help each other out. If you have any questions based on sports photography or videography or anything action-based or anything really about, about the camera, I, I love to talk, put them in the comments and you can check out some other videos I have that are talking about the Canon R5, R6, some tips. I'm an open book, you can come on the uh, TikTok, Instagram, we'll run all the channels. Go out there, create, and, and look, it's art, not science. Don't beat yourself up, go make some mistakes, and then come watch my videos. <laughs>